Okay, uh, so we've been talking a little bit about inheritance and uh, the code we use through inheritance. And today we're going to talk a little bit about working with um, arrays of objects. Okay, in this case, it's a little bit different because working. Okay, now we know that an array can allocate many different types of variables. There can be reference types, there can be a primitive type, it can also have abstract or a concrete class or even an interface. Now when we use interfaces inside an array we need to talk a little bit about polymorphism. So we're going to talk about three things today. Let's say we have our interface that we always call shapes, right? So this is our interface where we have some me some methods, okay? And those methods are let's review those methods are probably area draw get x get y and stretch by. So we have get x we have get y, we have stretch by, okay, we have draw. So these methods, remember, are common to all the classes that are going to be implemented by shapes. Remember that the classes implement the interface. So this is the interface, okay. Now these methods are going to be used or by any object of those classes and we won't have to worry about what type of object is on each class. In other words, I have let's say three uh, classes. Okay. Remember that I have the circle, I have the rectangle, and let's say I'm going to make a triangle. And all these classes implement shapes. Okay? Now, the, this circle, you can say that it has the wheel subclass. Okay? Now polymorphism is about sending messages from a wheel object okay, to shapes using any of these methods and not worrying about the type of shape. If I am getting the X position of the wheel, I can use um, the direct method get position, get X position. So if I have a wheel object, okay, if I have a wheel object and I want to use the get x position then I need I can use it directly. So let's say I built a new shape, okay, wheel, okay. After I create that new shape wheel I can send messages to new wheel, okay, after I instantiate the wheel. Let's say I created the, I use the default constructor, so I have a wheel of a radius of 1, okay? Now, I want to send a message that is on the shape's interface for this wheel. So it's going to be very simple. I can say s dot get x position and I will get this immediately uh, well depending on what it returns it, it must return two ints or it must return an int right so now I am getting the X position from a shape that it was a wheel so I can send direct messages even though these methods are 
on the shape interface. Okay? But wheel also has um, some methods that are not used by all the classes. Okay? So wheel has another method that it's called um, set spokes. Now set spokes it's only for the wheel class. Okay? The set spokes method is only from the wheel class. So let's say I still have my my uh, object wheel okay I still have my object wheel but I created it as a shape so we have shape as new wheel okay in this case if I want to set the spokes if I want to set the spokes for this object that I created as a shape I'm gonna have to cast it okay casting an object that wasn't created exactly as an as that object um, uh, will not be run okay so there are two ways one is creating um, is creating an object an object wheel and sending the message set spokes okay and another one is casting so let's say the the first uh, the second version. Let's say I created a shape object, but it's a wheel, okay? Through the interface. So I created an object, um, the object as a wheel, okay? In order to use the method set spokes, I need to cast it. So what I will do is cast it as a wheel. Wheel. Okay. And then I'm going to say that this is S. Okay. And then I will use the method selector with set spokes okay now the parameters of set spokes is an in integer number so let's, uh, let's say I'm gonna put 5 now in this case even though I used an object from the shape interface that is a wheel in order to use the set spokes method that it's that only applies for the wheel class I need to cast it as a wheel now a big problem is casting an object that wasn't made for for this type. Okay? So let's say for example I create another object. I create right now uh I can create a circle. Okay? Let's say I create another object. Let's say C equals new circle. Okay? And I want to use the set spokes, but I'm casting it as another thing. So what if I say I'm going to cast a wheel? Okay? C dot set spokes okay in this case if I cast this object that is supposed to be a circle and I cast it as a wheel just for using a set spokes method it will return uh, a runtime error of casting okay it will return an error So you will have an 
an error that says class cast exception. Okay, in this case, this error is when I apply um, a cast to an object that is not set as that type. Okay? Now this is the second version, like casting. You can also apply set spokes to an object immediately as a wheel. So I can create a new wheel. Say S, new wheel. Okay. Now this uh, this wheel can accept direct messages from uh, from from the class. So I can say set spokes. Okay, and there's not going to be a problem here. Okay, because remember, set spokes is only from the wheel class. Okay. So let's continue about. Um, talking about arrays of objects. Here's something that we needed to know about casting and polymorphism. But the real um, the real application of this is using arrays of objects because I can have many objects inside an array, uh, or I can have many interfaces inside an array. So in, for this case, we're going to use an array of interfaces let's say an array of shapes okay so what we're gonna do now is create an array of shapes that have different types of shapes on each position of the array so it's very simple I can create A shape array, right? That it's called shapes, and I'm gonna set it to ten positions. Okay. After I create the positions, I have a table over here that I have shape zero, I have shape one. So I have many shapes on this list, on this list of arrays. I have shapes on different positions, okay? So I can create a shape on each position. So let's say on position zero, I'm gonna create a new circle with the parameters of circle. That is the position on X, a position on Y, and of course the radius. Okay? I can even make a wheel on the next position with the parameters of wheel. Okay? So let's say it has the same position, okay? It has the same radius, but it also has a parameter that is the spokes. Okay? So here, I put the spokes immediately. So I created a wheel because the constructor method of wheel allows me to do that. Okay. Now after I do this, I can draw all the elements of this array using, of course, shapes has a method that it's draw that will allow me to implement or draw all the different objects of the class circle, wheel, rectangle etc so for this I can create a very simple loop but first I have to make a the pen use the pen application the pen class sorry the pen and I'm gonna create a new standard a new standard pen okay now I will create a loop that should go all the way to the length of, sh of the, the array that I created. So 
So okay. to shapes dot length. Okay. And I want this to increment increase one by one. Okay. So I'm gonna create a loop for this. Now this loop is gonna allow me to go around all my array. And of course I will use the draw method okay with the pen that I created. okay? Now what I'm doing here is that I'm drawing all the, the circle, I'm drawing a wheel, I'm drawing a rectangle, etc. on each of the, on my array. <coughs> the problem is that if I want to change the spokes of the wheel later on, I need to know the position of shape, the position of the wheel in shape, uh, that way I can cast it to change set spokes okay now there's a really good tool for that if you don't know what is the position that holds that holds a shape like wheel okay let's say you don't know what is the position of shape in that case I can create another loop just to know what is that uh, what type of variable we have in that position okay so let's say I want to find which of the shapes that are on the array are wheels then I can use a very cool method or tool that is called instance of so in this case I would probably make another for loop to go around the all the um, array Okay. And in this case, I can say that if the shapes on that position, sorry, the shape on that position, it's an instance of wheel, then I can cast it and change the, sp the spokes. Remember that in order to change the spokes of a wheel that was instantiated as a, an object shape, I need to cast it. So now I can cast it as a wheel. Okay, in that position with set spokes. Okay, so that is um, so that is uh, what it what it tries to do is that I can look for different instances of a new class that it's wheel or circle or triangle because I know that wheel is a subclass of circle, so it has some methods that are not on the shape and they're not relevant of circle. Remember that wheel is an extension of circle. Like triangles, we can have equilateral triangles, uh, isosceles, and those can be extensions of the class triangle. Okay? In that case, we have to cast in order to use those methods. Okay? Now, as we said, you can create arrays of objects. Uh, the most general type of array is, of course, an array whose element type is object. This array is the most flexible of any we have seen thus far. Not only can we insert any object into an array of object, but we also can replace any array of object with another array of any reference type. 
Okay, now on the exercise 11.6, um, maybe uh, you guys uh, had some trouble understanding what was the what was the problem. So I'm going to make a short a short example of why was correct or incorrect when we were using it. Okay, now the first one A said um, there's an object. Okay, so you create an object. Okay, so an object array, and then I create a new object with 10 positions. Okay, and we're assuming that we're using the student class, so you have to be careful of the structure of the student class. So I can put a student here if I create, like on position 0. I can create a new student, okay? With the default constructor. Okay, so I create a new student. And on position one, I create a string that is called hi there. Now I think you need to review the methods, the advanced methods for strings. Okay? Now if I want to print and I use this method okay what is the problem okay what is the problem here well this is a string Okay, this, these are an array of objects, and this is a string. If I'm using index of, and object does not have that method, okay, remember that strings have some personalized methods, okay? So the index of method is only for string types, okay? <coughs> I need to cast it and this is not done yet okay I'm just saying that in position a1 there's the index of so object does not understand index of object does not understand index of okay so that is a problem here. I'm sending an I'm sending a message to an object that does not understand this method. So you need to cast it. Now the 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 second one B happens exactly the same thing. Okay? So what would be the correct way to do it? Now C is the correct um it's the correct way. Now on C I have an object. I can create an object. An object array of ten positions on position zero I create a new student and on position one I create the string Okay, I'm doing well so far. So far, I have a student on position zero that is an object student. I have a string on position one, so they're different. Okay, object is the interface. Remember, the the interface that has methods that are in common. Maybe a to string is in common for both of them. A to string. <coughs> now here, when I'm going, when I need to print.
I need to cast this as a string first. So I need to cast it as a string on position one. Then I apply index of in order to use the method. Okay. So this is the casting. This is the the way that um, you should cast this this uh, this string here. Because remember that this index of needs to work only with strings. It would be good to look at the advanced options for strings, like compare to. Okay, index of. Okay. Um, there are others. Okay, and it's important that you understand what they return. Like compare to returns an int. Okay, when I use this method it returns an integer number. Index of returns uh, a boolean. I'm sorry, an int. Index of it can be a, a character or it can be a string, a substring, but it returns an integer like the index of where it is. Okay. So it's very important that um, that you remember these uh, methods for for strings. Another very important one is equal equals. Okay, and you have a string over here. You have a string as a parameter and it will return a boolean. It will return either true or false. So this is very important to understand how to use strings and they are very very useful for all your programs so this is basically the tutorial the um, the explanation that I have on polymorphism casting and um, instance of okay after this you will be able to finish and go on to advance um, and go on to inheritance and abstract classes Okay, and you can finish the, the, I know that you guys are, are leaving on a short break, but you can finish the chapter and we will get back next week, okay? So good luck.